so today is Star Wars Day, and I just have to say, may the fourth be with you. Conic sections. There are four conic sections. They are uh, circles, ellipses, hyperbolas, and parabolas. All right, so we all know what a circle is. So let's start with that one. Um, in order to actually graph a circle, the, there is an equation for it. Here is the basic equation. And the elements that we need to know are the H, the K, and the R. And you're going to see H and K throughout all of these. HK basically represents the center or vertex of whichever conic section we're, we're talking about. And speaking of the word conic section, section of a cone, we'll get into that more detail in, in class. So um, don't worry about why it's called a conic section just yet. But again, for a circle, this is the generic equation. And we want to focus on the H, the K, and the R because knowing that information will tell us how to graph the circle. Um, HK is the center of the circle, and R is the radius. Notice that in the equation it's R squared. So if I'm looking at an example here, and I see my HK here, X minus 3, Y plus 2, uh, the signs that you see are the, op you always have to use the opposite signs, it's going to be consistent throughout here. So if this says x minus 3, then that's the x value of the center is positive 3. Uh, the y value is going to be the opposite of this, so the y value is negative 2. That's how we're getting right here from this. We're getting the center is at 3, negative 2, which is the opposite signs. And then again, the radius is squared. So if you see 16, the radius isn't 16. The radius is the square root of that, which is 4. And so then once I've got my center, and I know that my radius is this, then I just go up 4, put a point, over, down, over, and then I'd have enough points to accurately draw a circle. That's all you got to do for a circle. Next is an ellipse, or more uh, commonly referred to as an oval, but that's not what its real name is. Its real name is an ellipse. So uh, the ellipse formula is very, very similar. Um, some of the key differences are that the right-hand side should always, always, always equal 1. should always equal 1. Um, and then on the bottom, we have two numbers that are kind of like the radius was in the previous, you know, in that they're squared, but um, they deal with the x direction and the y direction, how much it's stretched in the x direction, how far it's stretched in the y direction. So once again, hk is the center. And then whatever the a value is, not, not, not the number you're actually looking at, because um, remember it's square, so you have to square root it. So, but whatever a is, you're going to go that much um, left and right of center and put a point. And whatever the b value is, you're going to go that much up or down and put a point. Um, and that's really what this, this whole statement is saying right here. So then, um, a little bit of vocabulary here. Depending on which one of these is bigger, the A or the B, that, uh, that'll give us a major axis for the, for the ellipse. And the major axis is just the part of the ellipse that's longer than the, the other part. And so if A is greater than B, well, A is tied to the X part of this equation. So then that means that the, in the X direction, the X direction is the major axis. It's, the, it's stretched more on the X axis when we're horizontal. But if the uh, B value is bigger than the A value, well, B is tied to the underneath the Y here. And so then that means that it's more vertical, because remember, Y goes up and down. So then that means that the uh, ellipse would be more of an up and down stretched uh, kind of oval or ellipse shape. So here you can see two different types in you know, not specific, with not, no specific numbers. It's just, um, you know, here the A value is going to be bigger than the B value. I don't know what the A and Bs are, it just in order for it to look like this, the A must be bigger than the B value. And once you've graphed your center, you would just go, you would take your A value and go left that many spaces, take your B value, or sorry, do your A value and still go right that many spaces, and do the same thing for the B value. Uh, whatever B is, I'm going to go up and down that many spaces. And the same thing is true if it's this. It's just that, I mean, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm not doing anything really different. It's just that 
if A is bigger than B, it's going to look like this. If B is bigger than A, it's going to look like this. I'm going to do the same thing either way, no matter what. I'm going to graph the center, and then I'm going to go A spaces left and right. I'm going to go B spaces up and down. So looking at a specific example, I can see here, uh, to get the center, it's going to be positive 1 for the X. There is no plus or minus for the Y, so that's a 0. So the center is 1, 0. That's going to be 0. There you go, 1, 0. Oh, look right there, 1, 0. There's my center. And then um, looking at the denominator for X, that's a 1. Uh, 1 squared, which is still 1, but the way they're writing it, I can easily tell that I'm going to go one space left, one space right from the, from the center. And since, um, again, they're showing it as two squared, so I know the B value is exactly two, that'd be two spaces up and two spaces below, and then I make my oval, or ellipse shape. And that's how you graph an ellipse. Bottom line is, what's the center, what's your A, what's your B, and just go left and right that many spaces, up and down that many spaces for B, and you've got your, uh, your ellipse. Okay, now this next shape is going to be a little different, something you haven't really seen before. Uh, a hyperbola is um, definitely an odd looking shape, as you can see from any of these pictures here. The main, the main thing about a hyperbola is uh, the difference between this and the last one is just that there's a minus sign. That's the whole thing. In fact, I'll even switch back real fast. So you can see in this one, uh, it's very, pretty much looks the exact same thing as this except for, yep, that changed uh, from a plus sign here to a minus sign here. Now, depending on the order of my x's and my y's, whichever comes first, then uh, that'll depend whether or not it'll be more of a horizontal type, uh, which would be this first one, so this is more of a horizontal versus a vertical looking um, hyperbola. So when y is the leading thing, then you have a vertical shaped uh, hyperbola. And you can kind of see these look a little bit like uh, parabolas. They behave differently. And the other thing, of course, is that uh, hyperbolas are both, uh, they have two sides to them. Um, even though like this is not a function, but hey, neither were some of the other ones. So, okay. So, um, to graph this, it's definitely a little bit different. You still have HK, which is still the center, and you definitely got to pay attention to um, H is whichever one is tied to X, and K is whichever one is tied to Y, because uh, whenever we do our example here, it's it's I'm given Y first, so you got to really pay attention to it. But once you figure out where your center is, then you use the A and the B values to create an imaginary box, and I'll show you what that looks like here. So let's make sure we actually know what our center is. Um, starting with the x, it's got to be the opposite sign, so it's a negative 3 for x. And then for the y's, it's going to be a positive 3. So sure enough, there's the point negative 3, 3, which is our center. And then we need to know our a value and our b value. In this case, really, it, I mean, I don't care what you say is a and what you say is b. You just need to know that, uh, you know, first I had to square root these numbers. So then that means I've got an A value of 4, square root of 16 is 4, and a B value that is square root of 9 is 3. Um, what's important is I don't care which one you call A and B, which variable were they tied to? Were they tied to Y or was it tied to X? Well, this one is tied to Y. So I'm going to go four spaces um, up and below from the, from the Y value. So then, I'm going to go, uh, let's see, four spaces, that would be right at, okay, so if it looks like I was confused just then, it's because I saw a mistake and I had to pause and figure it out. Uh, the Whatever website I stole this from did not do this correctly, so I needed to make one small change. Bear with me for a second here. Um, we need to pretend that this 16 and this 9 are on opposite sides here because that will make the picture look correct which I'm more interested in. So again I don't care what thing is A and what thing is B. What matters is 
what is it tied to? Well, if I'm going to pretend now that the 16 and the 9 swapped for the sake of this picture be coming up correct, then the 4 would be uh, coming from the square root of 16, which is going to be underneath the x, and the 3, which is the square root of 9, is going to come from underneath the y. So again, bear with me on that. Well, in that case, um, because we're leading with y, I'm going to use you know, that square root of the denominator, the 3. I'm going to use that to go that many spaces up. See why now that makes sense? Because I had to go three spaces up. So from here up 3, that gets me here. Or down 3, that gets me here. If I'd used the 4, that wasn't going to work. So that's why we had, we had to swap that. So um, I do that. And then I also now from there take the, the other value underneath the x, which I got to be 4. I go four spaces left and right on top and bottom. So that would be about here and again down here and let's see, four spaces over would be here and here. So remember we're talking about creating an imaginary box and all that is is um, you know whatever's the first thing here, this denominator Okay, uh, I'm going to go that many, the square root of that many spaces up and down if it's y, or left and right if, it, if this first thing is x. And so since we're saying that this is a 9, I'm going 3 spaces up, 3 spaces down. Okay, that's the first thing. And then the second thing I'm doing here is uh, I'm going to go, since this is x, I'm going to go the square root of this amount, which is 4, spaces left and right, left and right. And all of this now has made a nice little imaginary box for me. And the way I use that now is um, I create uh, I create some di diagonal lines through all this. So I create a diagonal line from one corner of the box through the center to the other corner of the box. I do that for both sides here. So we need all these imaginary lines to help us draw the final picture. Because to draw the final picture, now I've got this vertex point here, and I've got these diagonal lines, these imaginary diagonal lines to help me guide my, my hyperbola. Because I'm just going to gradually make that thing go out and be like an asymptote, get closer and closer and closer to this diagonal line, but never touch it. And so I'm just going to do that on both, both sides top and bottom, no left and right sides. And so that's how you graph that. And we'll practice that some more in class because that was a little confusing with a little mix-up. Okay, the last one is parabola, which we're totally familiar with. And we're thinking, why do we need more information on how to graph a parabola? Because we're going to understand what it is as a conic section and how that's different. Um, so, And also because we can graph parabolas sideways too using this. And so we have two equations. Um, oh, I say regular for this one because if you graph this one, uh, notice that the x is squared. So when x is squared, that's going to give you your right side up parabola. Um, versus if it's y that's squared, that's going to give you a sideways shaped parabola. So now we need to know a couple of vocab words. We need to know what the focus is and what the directrix is. These are technical terms belonging to parabolas. The focus um, and the directrix are two things that if I just if I draw uh, a directrix is a is a line that goes on forever, and then the focus is a point not on that line, and then what an actual parabola is, it's all the points that could be equally distant from this point to this line, and so if you look down at these pictures down here at the bottom, I can see there's a directrix and Here's a focus, and that if I want to get any point on this parabola, then I can just go, all right, well, sure, right there. This distance has to be the same as this distance. And that's true even from, from the focus straight down to the vertex, that that distance has to be the same as that distance. And so that's a technical definition of what a uh, parabola is. You start with a directrix a line, and then a focus, which is a point not on that line, and then all the points that are equally distant from that create the parabola. 
Um, another way to understand focus is uh, imagine a satellite dish and that's in the shape of a parabola then that little receiver that sticks out just past the satellite dish that receives all the data that's the focus because the satellite dish is shaped to sh uh, to get all that data focused right there and then that collects it and then you watch TV okay so then with all that information to begin with then we start with that uh, HK is still my uh, vertex and then looking at the formula either way there's a P in here the P is the distance between the focus and the vertex. So now let's apply that. Here's an equation. I can see it's a y squared equation, so it's going to be a sideways parabola. And to get the vertex, then it's going to be, starting with the x here, opposite sign, negative 5, opposite sign, 2. Okay, I already wrote that down yet. The vertex is negative 5, 2, so we'll graph that. Negative 5, two right there. Then we need to find the p-value. Well, p-value comes from right here. And part of the original equation is that, that that's the that's 4p. So if 4p is 12, then just divide both sides by 4 and you get that p is 3. So now that we know that p is 3, that's how many spaces I go from my vertex to my focus. And so, I'm going to use a little different color here for the focus. Since we're a sideways shaped parabola, I'm going to go to the right of my vertex. If this was a regular shaped parabola, I would go up from my vertex. So sideways shaped right, regular up when I'm uh, making my focus. So one, two, three spaces. So this is the focus right here. It's not actually a point of the parabola but it's a point that we'll use now to graph the rest of the parabola. The last thing you do to graph the rest of the parabola is to go 2p, twice as many spaces as we just did, go 2p spaces, uh, now in this case up and down. And then that'll get us all the points we need. So 2p spaces up would be, we'll see p was 3, so 2p is 6, so then that's up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and down one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so then I now have three points. That's all of the points you need to make a parabola. So now I just graph what I've got. And kind of ugly looking, but there you go. There's there is our parabola. Okay, very long video, but probably the last one we ever had to do. Um, we'll go cover more of these in class with some more f official notes, um, but, um, you know, may the fourth be with you.